what I want to show you today is the new capability how to create an Outlook add-in um, with an Outlook Web Access with um, SharePoint Framework. And I'm heavily using as well Microsoft Graph here for my demo case. But first, uh, for those of you who might not know me, my name is Markus Möller. I work for Avanart in Germany. You can find me on Twitter as well as on my blog post. I do not present the first time uh, here, but the second only. And luckily we found the slot today because I'm also having a family leave in two weeks or so, but uh, see you something in my demo on that as well. So about the story, what I'm going to show, I um, would like to introduce you is what you like to against uh, the intro is um, to store complete mails to OneDrive and uh, or Microsoft Teams. What we have to do for this story is to first get the Outlook context from the current mail. Then we have to browse our targets, OneDrive groups or Teams folders um, to find uh, a position where to store it. And then we have to grab the full mail as a, mime, as a MIME stream with Microsoft Graph and finally store it. And in storing, you have two options with Microsoft Graph. The first is one is for small files, smaller in four megabyte. And this is a quite simple story. And for big files, um, greater than four megabyte, uh, you have to do it a bit more complex. What I will show you in the demo exactly um, in terms of code as well are the first thing, the third and the fourth thing. Browsing targets is a bit um, complex to show, to demonstrate, and this is why I will skip this. And there are also other great stories out there um, that you can use. So when we go to Virtual Studio Code for a while to show um, the solution for an Outlook add-in, we first need two things. We need a manifest file. This is in the Office add-in folder. And here, for instance, we can give um, the display name or a description of our add-in. The second thing and the first part of the demonstration is in a web part, we first need to retrieve the context. And this is shown here. So we retrieve the context and the mail and the item ID and the subject. And finally, in a controller, we have some methods to save our mails. First, we retrieve a mail, and this is the API for that with Graph. So uh, get the message, get the mail ID, which we retrieved, and uh, the value. And once we retrieve that, we can check the size and either save it in a normal way or in a big way. The normal way is quite easy. Simply start away. And the big mail, we have to open up uh, an upload stream first, and then we will upload the mail in slices until we have no portions left. How does this look like in action? We first have a small mail here, a demo, mail from my daughter, expected to be born in two uh, weeks around. She just want to introduce herself right now. In the context of this mail, we have our, I call it in this way, copy to SharePoint Outlook add-in, which we can open up. And once this is running, we first hit here our context, we have our mail, and we see that this mail has an item ID and a subject. The subject we will only use later for the file name of the storage. Now we have our OneDrive, our Teams, and our group's entry points. For instance, we can start to browse in OneDrive here. It takes a while, but here we have our folder structure, and we can move now through our folder structure, quite the same like out-of-the-box capability from SharePoint, for instance. And then, for instance, we can move to a subfolder. And we can save it here. And now we have a small mail. You see this is only a text mail. And here on the response length, you can clearly see this is a really small mail. So we will only jump in our normal mail file, uh, normal save method. And there we can only save it away. This doesn't take long. We will return a success uh, message here. That's all we did so far. And that's done. Now, the same, but how does it look like when we have a much bigger mail? This mail is around 12 megabyte in size because this is a high resolution photo. And um, what we can do here is the same. 
have again our mail item and our subject. Now let's go to Teams, for instance. Here we see lots of teams and pick one and browse through the documents library. Again, we have some folders here and save it again. This takes some time now, you can see, because now what he's doing is he's retrieving the mail from graph, so this 12 megabyte in size at the MIME stream. And there we are. And here we see the response length is much, much bigger than our size. And when we jump in, we, uh, we are going to our big mail savings. Once we move forward, we can see again here that we are uh, here in our upload mail. We already created an upstream above. This is quite simple. You can see from the code. But um, when you later check the code or my blog post on this, but here what I want to show is the upload mail slices. So we are separating this in portions of 320 kilobytes uh, multiplied with five, but you always have to use 320 kilobytes in size. So what he does now after every slice, he checks if the response contains an ID. And this is currently undefined and this takes several times now, but not that much. And there we are done now. This is how the savings of big files in Microsoft Graph work. And now let's uh, quickly jump to the results again here in my OneDrive under attachments, folder one, subfolder one. And here it was our mail. And once we open this, a normal mail, it's easily it can be opened fully in preview mode even. But when we go to our teams and check the big one in team number 14, within the files, it was folder one, I think. And I think it was subfolder one. There we have the big mail. This does not really have a preview because that's too big. Teams cannot handle that but we can download it and we can open that as well. And there it is. That's all from my demo side. Some things what I would like to do in the future on this new topic is um, what I showed you. It's the only way uh, in terms of debugging what I currently found as a solution. So you can upload the app with built not as ship mode, but in the normal debug mode. And then you can load it from I'm doing here. I can show you here that I'm uh, having a Gulp uh, surf task running in the background, which is serving that. So this works and then you can debug it inside your browser. But I would like to have a better capability here. And also as a hint, uh, Vesa, you said this on the documentation. This is not quite documented at the moment. Here, yeah, I would like to find out a better way for that. I would like to experiment more with the Outlook manifest because of course you can also change the logo. You can try to arrange later groups with that actions also in a ribbon once this is available. And this is the fi final thing once this is available for the office applications as well. And then I would like to see new ones on this idea to store something or also uh, create totally new ideas to work with PowerPoint, Word, Excel as well. Finally, just for the recording also as well, here are my resources. I have a blog series on that topic and also an SPFX sample. And that was from my side. Thank you. Now, Marcus, don't don't stop don't stop sharing don't stop sharing. Mm -hmm. don't, that, that, uh, people always want to run away. Can we go mm -hmm. back on the solution? So let's let's have this opportunity because we have some extra time because Martin yeah, cool. uh, isn't here. Um, can you just pinpoint for those who are not aware uh, how what where did we ask the permissions on the crafts? Just to recap that and what kind of permissions are we using in this yeah. case? Um, that was in the country packet, right? packet solution. Yeah. Yeah. Remember last a uh, long time ago, <laughs> maybe I have to add this, um, because, um, maybe someone is uh, thinking when he goes to my blog series, maybe I can insist this as well. I published this blog series, I think only four days after this, uh, capability with SPFX and Outlook add-ins yep. uh, went live, but honestly, 80% of this code would also work in a web part. So I have to admit, I already 
wrote it in last summer and was just waiting for the publication of this capability <laughs> and slightly adapt this. So this just as a hint, maybe you also have done this already, reused components from SharePoint web parts to Teams applications or so. You can do the same if you have the same idea, same working functionality from web parts to Outlook add-ins and force and back. So long time ago that I came across this, but indeed um, you need um, quite a lot here. And this depends on my solution. So you need group write or read all because I am retrieving all the groups a user could have. If you don't need that, you can skip it. But um, I think it's the same for Teams. You need user read, um, you need files read, and files read write, of course, and you need mail read because you need to retrieve the mail. Yeah. And um, finally, the sites read write all. I think this is not necessary because I think I dropped out for a while the capability to store to SharePoint sites as well, but this could work the same way. Yeah. Huge. Um, and then also the maybe the one thing to point out. So uh, the how did we the office add in folder and just to pinpoint that one that you need to run the 1.10 SPFX in the preview mode. So exactly, plus yeah. beta mode to be able to get that by default generator. What's interesting in there actually just to, just to pinpoint how we implemented this at least in a beta. So if you open up the manifest, if you scroll down on the, the URL, which is something like uh, office add in uh, all the way to the ASPX page. There we go, that Outlook, Outlook hosted app into the ASPX. So just to recap again, so the beauty of this model is that you do not have to host anything. You do not have to actually even go to Dash AD and grant the permissions. Well, technically you have to grant the permissions, but you're using SharePoint UI. Um, but no hosting, no deployment, no optimization, um, the CDN, everything else, and, and this is all, uh, is, and the hosting is automatic because we're using SharePoint as the platform. You don't have to use the SharePoint context, but you could use SharePoint just as the hosting platform and then uh, do operations uh, in the Outlook Web Access uh, site or in the team site. So you don't necessarily need to even access to SharePoint, but we're just using SharePoint as an underlying, let's say, framework to automatically host our stuff, which is always the most difficult, well, one of the most difficult things because in a normal enterprise scenario, uh, I know Marcus knows this really well as an Avenate uh, person, you cannot just go to a customer and say, yeah, I want to have a one application in Dash AD and give me those permissions. And um, that's taking ages to happen. Doing the automatic hosting in SharePoint, that's super, super easy and sweet. But um, anything right, yeah. else? Yeah. Um, no, I think you mentioned all what I also partly <laughs> wanted to mention, but you mentioned a lot more and that was really interesting. Yeah. Cool, cool. Excellent. Thank you, Marcus. Mm -hmm.